Here's why MDF is awesome for speaker enclosures. First, the weight. MDF is heavy. You want a heavy enclosure. A heavy box will vibrate less and therefore sound better. Plus, MDF is acoustically inert, meaning it's less prone to resonance. Well, less prone relative to any other wood product that you might use to build an enclosure. MDF is directionally stable, meaning it will not shrink or expand as humidity changes like natural wood will, but you don't want to get MDF wet. More on that in a bit. Another key advantage is that MDF is true to size, meaning three quarter inch MDF will be three quarters of an inch, while three quarter inch plywood will be a tad bit undersized. How much undersized is going to depend on the type of plywood that you use. The birch plywood from your big home improvement center is 0.703 inches, which is undersized by 3 64ths of an inch. That doesn't sound like a big deal, but small errors stack up and become big mistakes. Another great reason for you to use MDF is that it is easy to cut and mill. Saw blades and router bits tend to cause tear out in plywood but MDF can be machined to a smooth finish. This is really important if you're trying to create complicated shapes and edge profiles. With some skill and the right tools, you can make some stunning enclosures out of MDF. And hey, just to be clear, I'm not bragging saying the stuff that I make is visually stunning. Most of my projects have flaws. That's why I called this the DIY Audio Guy YouTube channel, not the Pro Audio Guy YouTube channel. If you're a DIYer like me, just trying to make every project a little better than the last, let me know down in the comments. And of course, the most obvious advantage of MDF is the price. It's typically a good bit cheaper than hardwood veneer, cabinet grade plywood. And that low price is attractive, but that's not the main reason to use MDF. You use MDF because you want a heavy, acoustically inert box. So why does MDF get so much hate? A lot of that hate is well deserved deserved, more on that in a bit, but the main source of hate is the confusion between MDF and particle board. When I see somebody bashing MDF enclosures online, they almost always call it cheap particle board. MDF and particle board are not the same. You can tell the difference by looking at the cross sections. The little bits inside the particle board are kind of rough and chunky. MDF is smooth. Screws and particle board don't really get along, but a coarse grain wood screw will hold in MDF just fine if you will pre-drill a pilot hole first. Which brings us to the downsides of MDF. First, it's really easy to split the end grain when driving a screw into the end grain, and it's really easy to damage the edges if you drop it. And if you do drop it, you'll see that it kind of comes apart like layers of cardboard that have been pressed together. The other big downside, and this one is huge, is the dust. When you cut MDF, it's gonna kick up a ton of very fine dust particles. That stuff is bad for your lungs, and to make matters worse, sometimes MDF contains formaldehyde. So a good dust mask is an absolute must. And that's especially true if you're using a router. Router bits take out a lot more material than a saw blade. So when you're using a router, it's gonna make a lot more dust. Another downside is the weight. Yeah, I know I started the video by saying the weight was a big upside, but weight is a double-edged sword. A full four by eight sheet of three quarter inch MDF weighs about 95 pounds. While the birch plywood from home centers is gonna be about 70 pounds for the same four by eight sheet. So the MDF is just harder to handle because of the extra weight. And for large boxes or really big builds, you may be better off spending the extra money for that birch plywood in order to save some weight. Now you can't stain MDF. So if you use MDF, you'll need to either paint it or or cover it with something like carpet, vinyl, or a veneer. Actually, that's not 100% true. You can buy a special brush that lets you replicate wood grain on your MDF. Now, painting MDF can be a little bit tricky. That's another downside. It's an absolute must that you seal the edges and it really doesn't hurt to seal the surface either. In fact, my buddy Toyd's DIY has a fantastic video on how to seal MDF edges. He and I do a live stream Monday nights at 7.30 Central Time. We'd love to see you in the chat on our next 
next live stream. And while I'm giving shout outs, I want to give a shout out to all my patrons and say thank you so much for the support that you give the channel with a special shout out to $25 patrons, Baba, Dylan, Bam Bam, David T, and Bo. One of my favorite things to do for home speakers is to cover the MDF with a hardwood veneer and then apply stain to that veneer. Now the downside is that hardwood veneer and things like fancy vinyls can also be really expensive and totally negate the cost savings to using MDF. Earlier I mentioned that MDF will not expand and contract with changes in humidity. But MDF doesn't really work well in wet and humid conditions. If you get MDF wet, it's going to swell up and that's going to, of course, ruin your enclosure. So whatever you do, don't get it wet and don't feed it after midnight. A lot of people like to use plywood because it's stronger than MDF. And it seems that everybody who makes this argument will prop up an MDF board on both ends and push down on it in the middle in order to see how much it deflects. Then they'll turn right around and do the same thing with a plywood board. That's a fine way to demonstrate the physics of different materials if you're building shelves. But speaker boxes aren't shelves, they're boxes. So all four sides of the material are going to have support. And the enclosure is going to be plenty strong. Especially if you build a proper box by doing things like using a double baffle and including plenty of bracing. Now these elements add strength, but the main reason to use them is to reduce panel resonance. So you really should be using them no matter what material you're using to build the enclosure. Also keep in mind that birch plywood from the home center is not actually birch. It's pine plywood with a birch veneer. Now it's not bad stuff. It's cabinet grade. It has a lot of layers and very few voids, but it's not true birch. The absolute best plywood is this stuff known as Baltic birch. It's made up of multiple layers of actual birch hardwood, and it is superior to the birch from the local home center. Thanks to all those layers, the edges look really cool, and it does an excellent job holding screws. The veneer face on Baltic birch is a lot thicker than the veneer face on the birch from the home center. And the Baltic birch typically comes in five foot by five foot sheets. It's very hard to find and very expensive when you do find it. If you live near a woodcraft store, they stock smaller Baltic birch project panels, but they don't tend to carry full sheets. Now, if you live in or around a large metropolitan area, you can probably find a plywood supply house, the kind of place that sells to cabinet shops or industrial customers. And they don't really want to deal with you unless you're going to buy a very large quantity of material at once. So most of those box snobs out there talking trash about MDF are really just using pine plywood and they're not the bougie hipster they think they are. Now I said most, not all. Some people actually do use the real thing. And there's nothing wrong with using the hardwood veneered plywood instead of MDF. It's actually a really fantastic material. It's lighter, of course, only weighing about 70 pounds for a sheet. And most importantly, you can stain it. If you're good with stain, you can make some absolutely stunning speaker enclosures. Both of these materials have their uses. To learn more about how to use them to build speaker enclosures, click on this video right here. I'm Justin, also known as the DIY Audio Guy. Click this button right here to subscribe to the channel, and I will see you on the next adventure.